Welcome back to Book Break. I'm here with a special guest star today. This is Anna. Hi. Who has been working on the marketing for a brand new book, a brand new adorable book, The Kamigawa Food Detectives. So I'm dragging Emma along <laughs> on, on I my journey. Love this book. We both are obsessed with this book. Yes. I mean, it's got a cute cat on the front. It's got a cute oh, cat not. on the front. It's a book translated from Japanese. It's already been a big Japanese bestseller. Um, and it's about a really mysterious restaurant where the father-daughter duo who run it can recreate dishes that you remember from like a particular time in your life. So people go and describe, they might not remember the recipe, but they'll be like, it sort of tasted like this and I had it here. And they go and do their food detectiving and yeah. they piece together what the recipe might have been and then recreate this dish and like unlock some memories. Yeah, and some of the dishes they've not, you know, had for 30 plus years. So it's like, obviously, very mysterious, trying to figure out what what the ingredients might be, but yeah, it's mouth-wateringly good. It is, <laughs> I like that. She works in marketing. <laughs> and it is the first in a series, yeah. so there's going to be more. It is no secret to regular viewers of Book Break that I am a massive, massive fan of the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. I actually made a video a few weeks ago where I made a PowerPoint detailing how much I cried while reading this series. So everyone knows I love this. And finally, I found another book that gives me the same feeling when reading it, and that is The Kamigawa Food Detectives. Yeah, so it follows the same short story structure, um, but these chapters are split out by dishes. So yeah. you've actually got the chapter titles as being the name of the dish that they're trying to find out and explore and figure out the ingredients for. Yeah, so it is a book that makes you really hungry while you read it, which is why I prepared, in case we get hungry while talking about it, I did get us some yummy Japanese cakes to eat while we talk about it. Yeah, I'm having the best day. <laughs> yeah, because this actually is not the first Japanese food we've eaten today. We actually already went out for lunch. So, should I show you that bit now? We went to go and try and find the Kamigawa Diner, which is basically the restaurant in the book. Yeah. And the, Kawaga the Kamigawa Diner is really mysterious. So, the only way people can find it, they have a one-line advert in a magazine called Gourmet Monthly, but it doesn't tell you where to find it. It doesn't give you an address, doesn't give you a website, phone number, anything. So it's kind of like, if you need us, you will figure it out. So we set out to try and have a meal at somewhere like the Kamigawa Diner. And yeah. I will, I will show you now how we got on. We found it. Found it. We have been the Kamigawa food detectives and we have literally found this restaurant. It is tucked away down a tiny alley. It has no sign. You would no sign. never know it's there. It has no address. We know the name of it, but we actually spoke to them and they said, please don't tell anything about us on the internet so I'm not yeah. going to tell you the name. When you read the book this is what you should picture when they describe the like mysterious restaurant hidden away. This is it with Anna in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay now we're gonna go to somewhere that we could get a table and eat some yummy food. Very excited. The other thing that's amazing about the restaurant is that once you get there you if you're a first-time customer they just give you like the set menu which is basically like a bento box of all this incredible food so there's no menu for you to choose from you just arrive and yeah. they give you a selection of food and that is kind of what happened to us at lunch as you will see Good. Really, really good. What next? This is some kind of crisp. It's like a dried vegetable crisp. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Bit different. Something Bit different. This is sushi. Creamy. I'm glad you do. Okay, now I'm eating. It's not good. Really good. Really good. Amazing. Well done. Lots of food. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so we actually had 
one of those delicious bento boxes, which felt like we were at the restaurant. Yeah. But also, Anna actually tried one of the dishes from the book. I did. That's one of the ones people will try and recreate, which was really cool. Yeah, I was very excited about it. So I got the tonkatsu. I had it in pork, so it came with rice. And I mean, you've probably seen me eating it now. <laughs> it was delicious. Like it was really, really yummy. So I think that's also a dish that I'd try and make at home. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Well, you could, because actually in, in the story, the tonkatsu chapter of this book, which by the way was my favorite, that was the one that made me cry the most, because it had like <laughs> the biggest twist ending. Um, but in that one, they do give her some extra to go and make at home. Yeah. So you could do it. Yeah. This is good. Look good. I took a really big bite though. Yeah. <laughs> As Anna said, it divides up into chapters based on the dish and each one you meet a new person who comes to the restaurant for a different reason. So, should we go through what some of the stories are? Which was your favourite one? So we discussed this at lunch and we were going through, as we were eating our lovely food, trying to like decide which our favourite story was. And I think my favourite is when a man comes to the diner to rediscover food that his mum used to make for him that he's wanted to try and sadly his mum had passed away and that's all I'm going to say about it but that was the one that I really really loved um because I think just exploring like your childhood memories in that way a way that you've experienced your childhood that maybe is not necessarily the way that other people experienced it you know like a same lived experience but very different memories of it so yeah that's yeah. my favourite one. And I think all of the stories were really good at that, that they, it's partly about them revisiting this dish that they really liked and kind of having those memories that they wanted, but there's also a little twist at the end of almost every story, I think, has a little twist. Those are kind of the moments that made me burst into tears at the end of each story was like, yeah. when there's a little twist and you realise what's actually going on, it always made me cry. Yeah, because I think it's got a really good way of leading you down into what you think will happen. And then, it surprises you in a nice yeah. way. And I really love the like short story format anyway because it kind of feels like you're reading, you get to experience so many different characters and so many different walks of life. Yeah. But also it's just like you can really sit after you finish the chapter. It's like you can sit and just really think about yeah. that story and then... It's really cozy. I yeah. kind of read one before bed each night, had a little cry, went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so heartwarming Japanese book series that we love. This one, first in yeah. the series. First, and then you're gonna be getting so many more. <laughs> so many more, can't wait. This series, the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series, has four books so far, and they all are just like more emotional than the last. Do you have a favorite story that you remember from these? Oh, the husband and wife. I remember, I remember the husband and wife so much. That, I sobbed. Yeah. I sobbed, husband and wife. Yeah. That is a, that's a, a weeper. The most recent one has one about a dog, which is actually genuinely the saddest thing I've ever read in my whole life. You're not convincing me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Reading sad things about dogs is like the worst. It's the actual but worst. Yes, that one's had me falling. This is, look at those end papers. I know, show them. Look how gorgeous this it's is. So pretty. Like, this is oh. the, the special edition hardback, like collector's edition. I love the woman ghost. Yeah. She's like, one of my favourite characters. Yeah. And she doesn't do much. She's yeah. just grumpy. She's just um, grumpy. Yeah, so the ser if you don't know the series, it has a time travel cafe that can send you back in time to meet someone from your past or send you into the future. But there's like really, really strict rules that they have to have already visited the cafe and you can only, you can't stand up from your seat and you can only be in the past for a very short amount of time before the coffee gets cold. Yeah. That's why it's called that. Um, but there's also like really quirky eccentric characters like a grumpy ghost. If you get in her way, she will curse you. <laughs> <laughs> we love a scorned woman. We love a scorned woman. <laughs> Some other recommendations kind of on this theme that are standalone books, but that fit into the theme of cozy, lovely Japanese books with cats on the cover. Um, if cats disappeared from the world, is really, really good. And The Cat Who Saved Books as well. Yes. So that one said the bookshop. And If Cats Disappeared From The World is a really kind of unusual book. That one's about someone who like makes a deal with the devil, basically, that he gets, he's someone with a terminal illness and he makes a deal that he gets an extra day of life for each thing that he banishes from the world. So it's like, what would the world look like without telephones or without clocks or without cats? That 
That's so unusual. So yeah, yeah. really strange yeah. book. Um, but yeah, I think I'm learning that books translated from Japanese with cats on the cover <laughs> might yeah. be my favourite niche of book. Yeah, but Drowsy is my favourite. Drowsy is the name of the cat in this book. And yeah, it's a really good cat. I actually just want to jump into this book. Actually, we had a lot of reader reviews say that it just makes them want to go to Japan even more, which is lovely. Yeah, tell yeah. us, you you have some of the reader reviews. I do have some reader reviews. I'm very excited about the reader reviews. <laughs> I was just going to read some of my favourites. Um, and I think one of my favourites is it's a really sweet reminder of how important food is to our memory. Yeah, yeah. Which is, true. yeah, we were, we were discussing this and I think it really does make you think, what's the one dish you'd do anything to try again? And... Do you know what yours is? Do you know what? I actually do. I had a really great cannelloni when I was in Rome mm. and it was about four years ago now and it genuinely, I think about it at least twice a week. Wow. <laughs> Thank it was you. so good. It was so good. What yeah. about you? Well, that what you were saying about like that read review about how the the role that food plays in memory is so true because like so much food is linked to like a particular time and place. Yeah, so it's like it's not even about. It might not have been the most delicious cannelloni you ever had, but no. it's like it brings back a place and a memory. I remember mine specifically because <laughs> I wouldn't share it. <laughs> it was meant to be a sharing dish and I wouldn't share it. I was like, so I took one bite, I was like, this is so good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> um, yeah, what would, what would yours be? Oh, actually, you know what, I do know. Okay, mine would be a cake. In the village where I grew up, there was a little um, cafe. It was in, as far as I remember, it was like a furniture shop that also had a little cafe in it. It was quite random. Cute. So like, shirt, they like served tea and cakes in this little furniture shop. It sounds and adorable. It was very cute and it was by the park. So we would like go and play on the swings and slides and then we would go have a slice of cake. And they had a cake there that was called a Choco Mocha Caramel Cake. So I remember because I loved the name. Yeah. And I can remember what that cake tastes like. I can remember it had like chunks of caramel in it. It was so good. And honestly, it's like, as far as my tastes go now, it probably wouldn't be my favorite cake in the world, but I would do anything to have that cake again because yeah. At that age, it was just like the biggest treat I could possibly have. Was like go on the swings and slides, and then go have some chocolate mocha caramel cake. I dream about that cake. So the Kamigawa food detectives, if they could recreate those two things for us, yeah, I dream. That's all we'd need. Yeah, it's a book that is warm, loving, and comforting, much like the food within the pages. I adored it. It's my favourite book of 2023 so far. That's a great one. That was a very good quote. It will warm the cockles of your heart. I really enjoyed that. Utterly delightful and such a quick read. This book made me hungry. Yeah, <laughs> it, it made really us hungry. Does. I'm gonna actually, on that note, try some of this amazing bright green matcha brownie. Would you say that your mouth watered all the time at the amazing food yes. that was described? Yes, it did. Um, and I also just wanted to say a couple, because we've got the audio book coming out mm. as well. Oh, I feel good. It's wow. really good, isn't it? Yeah. There was someone that actually read the physical and then listen to the audio no book. Um, and yeah, they said that I loved the Kamigawa Food Detective so much so that I found myself revisiting it <laughs> through its equally enchanting audiobook format. Love that. It's a dining experience unlike any other, filled with heart, soul, and an array of mouth-watering Japanese dishes. That is summing it up really, really well. I'm so excited that there's more in the series because I yeah. want to keep discovering more and more, like meeting more characters. Also, I loved the main characters. So each chapter you meet new people who are on like a different mission to find a different dish, but the father-daughter duo who run the restaurant are obviously the same. So you follow them throughout and I loved them. Yeah. They're such good characters. They have such a good like chemistry. They're such a chemistry. Yeah. Cause they're, so the daughter is, is an adult daughter. Um, so they're very funny together and they like, at the end of each chapter, they kind of set off home for dinner and they, Kind of make reference to the fact they clearly both like drink too much and they're <laughs> yeah. like they're just quite like a funny pair and the yeah. the wife slash mother has died quite a long time ago but they still they have a little shrine to her and they still talk to her a lot and like include her in their like family meals it's like she's still there with them yeah very much it's really lovely day day. so again it's like food is like part of bringing this person to like with them to still be a really important part of their life yeah and like what her favorite meal yeah was and things like that and the daughter is the person that does the questioning and sort of like, I guess the interrogation, like mm -hmm. interview of what food 
the person is looking for who's come to visit the restaurant and then the dad was a detective is now a yep. retired detective so he goes off and finds all of the ingredients and I feel like he's quite tricksy like he even yeah. likes to keep things hidden from her and he's <laughs> very clever but because it kind of goes through his process of how he found each thing yeah and you're like wow amazing 10, 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 so that concludes our really fun day of eating lots of Japanese food and talking mm. about these books had a lot of fun. We've had a great day. We've had a good day. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, and please do comment below to let us know what's the one dish you'd do anything to taste just one more time. Yeah, and thanks so much to Anna for coming on and starring on Book Break. Thank you. This is my first time. I don't think I did lots of finger guns. That's what I'm known for, so. <laughs> she does have a habit of doing finger guns on camera. <laughs> um, I'm very restrained. I have been quite restrained. <laughs> but yes, thank you for having me. And I really hope you enjoy the book. Yeah, I think you'll really love it. Um, and I will link here to the video I mentioned with my PowerPoint about Before the Coffee Gets Cold. So do click through if you want to learn more about my crying patterns in great detail. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.